I have previously discussed the evidence that at the end of the Pleistocene some catastrophic force caused the death and destruction across South America. Throughout the Atacama Desert, scientists have found small shards of glass strewn across miles of desert and it appears like the formation of these might also be linked to the destruction caused during the Pleistocene. Let's dive in and find out more. The Atacama is a desert plateau in South America covering 1600 kilometers on the Pacific coast, just west of the Andes Mountains. It sits at an altitude of 2,500 meters or about 8,000 feet and is one of the driest places on Earth. But it was not always like this. In the not too recent, geologically speaking time, the land was much lower and probably harbored a more favorable climate. I have previously looked at the extensive evidence that Lake Titicaca, now the highest lake in the world, once sat at sea level, and the evidence of ancient agricultural terraces above the snow line, which once probably used to be much lower. We also saw that vast numbers of large mammal remains exist in South America, dated to the end of the Pleistocene, which show an extraordinary level of preservation. The cause of death, likely due to some catastrophe, that links other similar finds in other parts of the world also dating to a similar time frame. Could these glass fragments in any way be linked to the events of the uplifting of the plateau and the mass extinctions? It is believed that the landscape of the Atacama Desert changed about 10 to 15 million years ago, during the uplifting of the Andes. Prior to this, they know that the rainfall was much higher but then dramatically changed as the Andes rose up, cutting off the moist air, halting rainfall, and preserving the soil virtually undisturbed for millions of years. A new piece of work examines the glassy ejecta that are thought to be associated with impact craters. The paper examines the discovery of a 650 km square area that contained glass-strewn fields in the central depression of the Atacama Desert. These are centimetre-sized splash-form objects that are thought to form through the high-temperature melting of local magmatic rock with what they identify as a variable iron meteorite contamination. Their analysis showed that the likely formation age of these was about 8 million years ago. When they tried to identify a potential impact crater, none could be found. They collected over 23,000 samples across an area of roughly 650 square kilometres. The samples were encountered lying on the desert surface, and more abundant up to several tens per metre squared in gravel concentrations. Some samples have textures suggesting the formation by accretion of molten beads of a few hundreds of micrometres in size. Some have whirling textures indicating strong deformation in a liquid state. In most magnetic samples, about 10% of all of them Iron oxides can be observed as dendritic assemblages of micrometer-sized crystallites forming threads or globules. Their analysis showed that the samples must have been exposed to a temperature in excess of 1700 degrees Celsius, and the low water content excludes a volcanic origin. The most likely cause in their mind was therefore a hypervelocity impact. They do acknowledge that the temperatures could be reached with lightning however point out that the texture and shape would rule this out as a possibility. Composition in major and trace elements suggest a relatively homogeneous lithology from the target rocks, superimposed with iron, nickel and cobalt extraterrestrial contamination. When they analysed the composition of the target rock that might have created the glass, they were not able to match the composition to any known specimen in their existing database. When they examined the likely candidate for the impactor, they could only conclude that it was likely an iron impactor and they estimate that the composition of the impactor was 94% iron, 5.4% nickel and 0.45% cobalt. This allowed them to narrow down the group of meteorites to the IIAB iron group. This is not the only evidence of glass found on the Atacama Desert. Another set were discovered about 10 years ago and seemed to be located in a vast corridor stretching about 75 kilometers in length. The shards of glass are very different to the previous example. 
They are up to 50 centimeters across and come in many different twisted shapes. Their features are both rough and smooth and look as if they have been folded and twisted into shape. Some of these show that the surface has been sheared, twisted, rolled and folded many times before finally being quenched. Analysis of the samples indicated that they formed roughly 12,000 years ago. Early hypotheses suggested that they might have formed as the result of a large meteor exploding in the atmosphere. This would have thrown fragments of hot, fiery rock on the desert surface, with the extraterrestrial shrapnel melting the sand and soil on the spot. An alternative idea suggested that they could have formed through the heat from natural surface fires, in a different age and a climate when the desert was covered in more abundant vegetation. Further analysis of the glass showed that it contained elements that are not normally found on Earth. Minerals in the glass, called zircons, had decomposed to form a different mineral. This would have required an extremely hot temperature of over 1600 Celsius. And this is far hotter than wildfires can get. Further investigation of the minerals in the glass showed that there were some exotic ones that only tend to occur in meteorites. One of the minerals they identified was cubanite, which had previously been identified by NASA's Stardust mission, which collected samples from the comet WILD-2 in 2004. Whatever caused the event, the timing seems to coincide with a mass disappearance of the megafauna in South America, the supposed arrival of ancient hunter-gatherers in the area, and the change in the climate as well. So what can we make of these seemingly unrelated events? The timing of the first event comes after they believe the Andes were uplifted, raising the Cordillera and causing the Inter-Andean Ocean to vanish. This caused massive changes to the climate as the warm, moist air was blocked by the high Andes, turning the Atacama into a desert. The second event comes much later, but seems to coincide with mass extinctions in South America. In both cases, the glass seemed to exhibit strange swirling and folding patterns and indicated that considerable deformation took place while the glass was in a molten state. Their analysis of the target rock in the first case was not able to find a match, which is rather odd as you would expect it to match the material on the ground. In both cases, they find the presence of exotic materials in the glass and speculate that their origin has to be extraterrestrial. The meteor exploding above the surface would throw hot pieces of exotic rock onto the surface of the desert across a wide area and cause the sand to melt forming the glass. This would also neatly explain why no crater was ever found. But does it explain the contorted and twisted shapes of the glass fragments? Could a series of electrical discharges explain this? Lightning does strike sand and creates fulgurites. These have a very different appearance to these glass shards and fragments. What if the discharge was much bigger than simple lightning? We know from electrical discharge experiments that large discharges can create shapes that match what we call meteor craters. These discharges are so violent that they in part melt the surface and also cause an explosive event ejecting this molten material outwards. The partially molten ionized rock and sand would then twist and fold around the strong electric and magnetic fields that are created, causing them to twist and fold as they are ejected outwards and started cooling. The idea that one of the minerals found in the glass has also been seen in a comet may be yet more proof of this idea. If comets are electrical bodies where arc discharges occur as they move closer to the sun, these exotic elements may well be created in the discharge through transmutation of the elements present on the surface. Could a similar process be occurring in the formation of the glass in the Atacama Desert? The problem is that this would require a crater, which is not obvious in this case. In the latter case, the scientists consider the event to be caused by what they call an airburst meteor. This happens when the meteor suddenly explodes close to the surface. An alternative way of considering these events is that the reason the meteor suddenly explodes is because of a massive discharge from the Earth to the foreign object. This would happen because the object was not at the same potential as the Earth. This could explain why no crater can be found and the distorted shapes of the glass shards and may also explain why it is not possible to find a match for the rock type in the first example as transmutation may have occurred. The sizes of the fragments in both cases were very different, 
which does tend to indicate a different process for each. I'm also intrigued by the timing of both of these events, one coming just after the uplifting of the Andes and the sudden changes to the area, and one coming around the time of the mass extinctions in South America and the rest of the world. If we examine the evidence of the old agricultural beds, which appear to have been uplifted to above perpetual snow level, this once more raises the question of whether these events occurred much more recently than 10 to 15 million years ago, or whether civilization is much older than we recognize. Andy Hall's work might hold some clues to understanding what might have gone on. Dr. Mark Boslow has simulated the effect of an airburst meteor and found that its solid matter atomizes to form a bright ball of plasma, which essentially blow tortures the Earth. When the shock wave rebounds violently upwards, rising winds shear a column of updraft opposite to the downblast. Dr. Boslow theorizes that this supersonic updraft vacuums molten ejecta into the strike zone, leaving characteristic airburst marks. A linear hill with sharp peaked ridges and distinctive triangular buttresses on the flanks, surrounded by an upwardly blasted zone of molten ejecta. Scanning the landscape of the Atacama, we find some examples of these features across parts of the Atacama. In the latter event, a single meteor explosion close to the surface over a small constrained area cannot be responsible for the mass destruction we see around the same time across the planet. So was it just a rogue meteor, or was it part of a much larger field of meteors? If the latter was the case, we would expect to see many more craters than we do. If they were all airburst, then we would expect to find glass shards almost everywhere. One of the reasons we find them in the Atacama may be simply that this desert has remained almost untouched for thousands of years, with no rainfall and no life to disturb the shards. Maybe they do exist elsewhere, but have since been disturbed and moved through the normal erosion and deposition process that takes place on Earth. Of course, the assumption is that these were created by a single airburst meteor. Andy Hall's work may indicate that these smaller patches of triangular formations, which occur at different angles, may be related not through many different meteors, but instead through the idea of surface conductive fault currents. Through some geomagnetic event, the Earth's normal current discharge through the atmosphere, which we normally see in the form of thunderstorms and earthquakes and volcanoes, overloads and essentially short circuits. Sheets of lightning and plasma bolides arcing through the surface conductive paths above the ground left these blisters. It would not follow a straight line. Magnetic fields around the plasma current induce rotation along the horizontal axis, modifying the speed of the winds. It blows the ejector blanket asymmetrically, and it may carve a valley longitudinally down the centre of the hill. These magnetic fields may well have twisted and distorted the smaller fragment which later cooled as the distorted glass shards we find on the Atacama. The other open question is if the older event is in any way related to the uplifting of the whole area. What mechanisms are there for accounting for such a change of elevation? If the area was uplifted due to the movement of the crust, like in Hapgood's model, or even if the uplifting happened through the action of plates, does this have an effect on the net charge on the surface and the telluric current that would flow? If you remember back to the electronic tectonics episodes where I covered Charles Chandler's concept, you will realize that an uplifting like this has to cause massive changes to the charge flow to or from the surface. And what effects would this have? There are many pieces to this puzzle and many open questions. As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.